Chris the Bergeron zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. You want to sit? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. You're really going to do this standing up? You're going to hold the, uh, the little cue. You're kidding me. I'm going to do the clicking? Yeah, yeah. Here you go. Thank you so much for hosting. I'm going to click from yep, over there. Yep. Right? Go right ahead. Blink when you uh, want to. All right. right. I'll wink. <laughs> I'll do one of these. <laughs> so thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, actually, it's a great segue. Um, Arthur's done this a few times uh, to have uh, right at home follow the uh, Montachusett presentation because although we are a um, private duty home care agency, uh, we work very closely with the ASAP. So. Um, um, so we will work very closely with uh, an entity like Montachusett um, to work with them as a contracted uh, provider of home care services. So when you make that call, and I can't encourage you enough to make those calls before you think you need to make them, even if it's just, you know, I've got a couple hours, let me call them and understand what services because she went through a whole laundry list that still to this day after seven years in business makes my head spin. And so you really need to hear it several, you know, several times to understand all the services you could be potentially eligible for. Uh, that said, we work in collaboration with the ASAPs. So oftentimes when families call us for uh, uh, asking that question of, I have an aunt, I have a friend, I have a mother, I have a sister, I have a spouse that need, you know, or I'm just stressed and I need some help, one of the first things we will do, um, and I'll get into the actual services we provide in just a moment, is we often um, uh, will regularly will say, um, have you talked with Montachusett Bay Path, whomever the ASAP is for the, uh, for the, uh, the services the area the person lives in? And, and that's just so critical because if you're eligible for services, if you can get a discount on services, why not, right? <laughs> I mean, you sort of shop around for your best buy on uh, paper towels. Why wouldn't you at least uh, consider where you could get some discounted services? And it's not just the discount. It's really the resource that you're accessing. There are men and women that work at these agencies that just have extensive years of experience in the communities that you live in as well as um, for, uh, you know, in facilities and, and uh, with various home care services. So uh, this is us. Uh, actually, my partner, Gail, um, and I own the business together. We've been in business for seven years. We are based in Westboro. That's where our, um, this is actually our new building. So if you're ever uh, on 8 Church Street in Westboro, uh, feel free to knock on the door and say hi. Um, we service this area. Um, we um, service all the way, um, really, basically, eastern Worcester County. Um, next slide, please. So the services that we provide are, are varied. Um, we, on the, on the um, left-hand side here, um, those are the types of caregivers that we employ, okay? So these are, healthcare is made up of acronyms. You don't have to certainly remember them, but they really represent varying levels of skill sets, training, et cetera. So um, not all agencies employ all of these. Some of them will only employ home health aides. Um, some will um, employ home health aides and personal care attendants, and others um, will have um, the whole um, a continuum of, uh, of caregivers. Um, we happen to have sort of a, a skilled services model, so we do have nurses that care manage. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about what kind of questions should you ask um, when you're in uh, a situation to ask about care. Yes, sir. Great question. I'm gonna, yes, they are. In, in our case, yes. Yes. I, um, the, so the question, the question is, are they employees of ours, and how are they vetted, and how are they monitored? And I will get into that in just one slide. Okay, great question, though. Um, so um, we have um, uh, these individuals as employees. Um, all agencies work a little differently, and so I have provided um, a, a great handout. Um, feel free to please take one as a resource to you to answer some of those questions. And you should do your homework. You should do your homework um, by working with an ASAP, as well as if, you're as if you're getting referrals from the ASAP of who should I call uh, for care, call a couple agencies. It's your hard-earned money. Uh, you are bringing people into your home. You want to trust that uh, you can work with the agency, that you sort of uh, can meld and understand their culture, and that you uh, can trust the caregivers that they're sending in. Our caregivers um, provide uh, a variety of services. Uh, we help people with making meals. 
uh, sort of going to feel like repetitive. It sort of begins to sound, who's providing what care? We help people with providing meals. We help folks uh, that need help uh, with showering, uh, safely transferring from one physical location to another. Um, someone like myself, uh, you know, I had actually foot surgery. Um, uh, if I, for a couple days, let's say I just couldn't get up and around. I couldn't get myself a meal. You have hip replacement surgery. You just need transitional services to get in and out of the shower. Your wife loves you dearly, but she's not ready to give you a shower. Agencies like ours can come in for a couple days and provide some services. We can provide um, help you shave, help you uh, just grooming, um, uh, safely uh, kind of toileting, um, uh, personal care. Um, and then we get even more sort of complex as the aging process continues. Um, we take care of individuals with Alzheimer and dementia, um, early stage on through uh, very advanced. And one of the critical things, and Arthur touched upon this, and, and the ASAPs have programs to benefit, is really the respite piece. because. Um, often families, and, it, and it's wonderful if you have close families, friends, you're a member of a church where you have a whole community supporting uh, a loved one that needs care, but sometimes, quite, fr quite frankly, you need a break. And so we will often get that call for the family. I think you said you're heading to Florida, right? Next week, did I overhear that? So let's just say she's caring for the family member, and she's like, you know what? Every year, I've always taken a two-week trip to Florida. It's sort of what I look forward to in April, but I've been taking care of my mom, and I just don't know how to leave her. It's a great opportunity to call an agency and just see whether or not you're ready for that type of service to come in. But we can do that for, for a, a very short period of time, a couple days, up to you know certainly uh, several weeks. Um, our care varies, and agencies like ours provide care that varies from a couple hours a day or a week to 24-hour awake live-in care. Um, so it really does vary depending upon what the individual and family need. And then we do um, uh, care for individuals at, at, at end of life. So meaning that um, many of you have probably heard of hospice. And Arthur, will you touch upon that at some point in the series, um, in the third series? Um, so um, uh, hospice is a wonderful benefit um, um, uh, for those that, that need it. And, and um, we supplement the care that um, hospice um, agencies provide because th it is a medical benefit, and so there are only so many hours in a week, in a day, et cetera, and so we can kind of help individuals and their families through that process. Next slide, please. So the gentleman here in the Argyle sweater asked, well, how do I you know, know what, what type of caregiver would be hired and what is their training and how do you oversee them? So in this little handout, and I'm not going to read it to you because you can take one with you, sort of a great sort of what questions should you ask, what quality questions should you ask. So Joyce touched on... Um, how an ASAP, uh, when, they, when you contract with an ASAP, and that's sort of a nice way to say, are you contracted with an ASAP? If you are calling an agency like ours, are you contracted? It's sort of a nice um, uh, entry question because a good they... Polite, a good polite question. Yeah, right. it is. It is because sort of they, if, if as an agency like ours, we have to meet certain standards that are set by the state um, that go beyond just how we, um, uh, the background checks, it really is around documentation, it's around oversight, et cetera. So that's sort of a nice way. If, if an agency uh, isn't, then it's sort of just note to self and, you know, continue to ask your questions. Um, but you do want to understand our, uh, what sort of background checks and what sort of um, uh, insurance and licensure does an agency have. So not all um, employees of an agency, excuse me, not all caregivers may be employees of an agency. Um, you do want to ask that question. In the case of Right at Home, they are our employees. We're responsible for all of their taxes, their uh, workman's comp, uh, liability insurance, et cetera, et cetera. We go through extensive background checks. We go through the Cori process. They are bonded, but we also, we sort of take it a step further and that all of, uh, we do a social security trace and we actually verify through the Department of Homeland Security that these individuals are eligible and uh, to work in the United States. And that's just a commitment that we've made to uh, ourselves as an agency as well as to the communities that we service. And we just want to make sure that when we're sending someone out into the home, because they, they are, while there is oversight, and I'll touch on that in just a minute, they are in your home. So we don't have 24-hour eyes on them, and we want to make sure that the people that we're sending to your home are the people that we would send to care for ourselves or for a, a loved one of ours. Um, in terms of uh, oversight and training, all of our, our uh, services are overseen by a nurse. 
Um, they're care managed by a nurse. So that initial home visit, um, um, it's, you know, a lot of times folks are hesitant to call a private care agency because they're sort of like, oh, I don't want to get roped into anything, right? Um, most home care agencies will offer a free, you know, in-home consultation, or you could come to the office and just have that initial conversation. It can be done over the phone, but it's usually best done in the home just to sort of get the lay of the land. You know, do you have appropriate, you know, safety uh, uh, bars or, or chairs for the person to uh, um, safely be cared for? Um, but there is uh, a training. Um, all of our caregivers go through certain training depending upon their level. They have to be recertified, whether they're a home health aide, nurse, CNA, PCA, et cetera. Uh, we actually offer training to those caregivers, and then they will actually also go get their own certifications depending upon what their, what their need is. Um, um, we verify on an annual basis that you know, they have their appropriate uh, licensure. Um, or certification, and then uh, we regularly do routine background checks and screenings. Does that answer your question? 